Hello and welcome to the eighth lecture in the Jabra Reinforcement Learning Series. So this is going to be a very short lecture uh, on a new reinforcement learning algorithm that is closely related to policy iteration. So if you understood how policy iteration was working, then you should not have any problems at all understanding how this algorithm uh, works. If you don't have that understanding, please watch the previous videos because that's going to be really important for you to actually understand this. Having said that, I hope that you actually went through the programming exercises from the previous lecture uh, when we were actually writing the Python code for uh, policy iteration in solving for that uh, environment that I had presented in the very first lecture. So let's get down to it. The algorithm we're looking at is known as value iteration. Now, for us to actually understand what value iteration is doing, first let's take a look back again at policy iteration. Right. So what was policy iteration doing? Well, basically, policy iteration just say that we start with some policy pi zero, we do an evaluation step and we get v pi zero, and then an improvement step and we get pi one, an evaluation step and we get v pi one, and we continue this until we find an optimal policy that we denote as pi star. This was basically what policy iteration was. Oh, sorry. So now that we know what policy iteration was doing, we have a whole evaluation step and an improvement step. But notice something, we have to wait all the way until the evaluation step completes before we start the improvement. Actually referencing to the previous lecture, you will remember that we had first the evaluation code running and once it has converged, we try to improve and if uh, the policy is not yet stable, we go back to evaluation and so forth. So that was how policy iteration was working. Now what value iteration is doing is asking the question like, why do we have to wait until evaluation is complete before we try to improve the policy? This is what value iteration wants to know, right? We don't, we shouldn't have to do that according to value iteration we can actually improve the policy after one time step of evaluation. Right? Um, this is basically the idea behind it. So what it's actually saying is for us to compute the next uh, value at k plus one of s, right? What should we do? First of all, before I introduce what it's doing, uh, there's always uh, the expected update, which I presented before. I hope you remember what that is. But it's basically taking the expectation. Uh, basically, you can see it as the evaluation step, right? The expectation of R plus gamma VK, right? Uh, so the value uh, in the previous step. So VK of s, right, given, oh sorry, vk of s prime, because it's a future state that we're looking at, given s, right, this is essentially what we had as like the kind of expectation. I'm writing it in very loose terms, of course. Uh, if we were to write this in time steps, this would be RT plus one, this would be ST plus one given ST. This is uh, the basic idea. But so what value iteration is saying, like after we compute this expected update, right? We know that VK is not actually the optimal V uh, for the given policy, right? because it doesn't converge, it's just been one time step, right? So it, ha it still has to go through multiple time steps if it was just policy evaluation before it converges. But what value uh, iteration is saying is that, well, okay, we've done this, 
but how about we take the maximum over all actions of this term right so we're taking the maximum over all ac all possible actions uh, of this uh, expected update that's basically what value uh, iteration is doing so we're not waiting until the whole evaluation process is complete we are just immediately trying to improve after just one time step of the evaluation that's what value iteration essentially is doing right so given that uh, we're taking this uh, maybe this representation would let me try to actually boil this down uh, even further so that you have a better understanding of what's happening so we're taking the maximum of all action of the sum right of s prime comma r of the probability of s prime right uh, comma r given s comma a this should be the you should be familiar now that this actually generally boils down to this and we multiply this by the reward plus gamma v s prime right this is essentially what the idea is uh, i should write here vk s prime so basically we're breaking down this expectation to see what's happening we know that this is our model and this is the distribution of our states action space and so forth so the probability of us reaching a future state right is based on some given state and action we take so we evaluate all under all possible actions right like if we have action one with action one we compute this term with action two we compute this term with action three we compute this term with action four we compute this term right this is what we're doing uh, this whole term uh, that's what we're computing now if you remember from the policy evaluation step uh, what we actually ended up doing was uh, we would uh, have an extra term here for the probability distribution over the action space uh, if the, such a distribution existed right otherwise we would just be computing this term and finally what we're doing here is we're taking the maximum over all these actions right so we are before the policy uh, the value of the policy is converged we're already doing the improvement step now are the convergence properties actually going to hold in this case well generally speaking uh, without any proofs of course you can try to prove to yourself it comes back down to uh, if you remember what we had before the generalized policy iteration formula right if you remember you were starting in some position here and uh, you start with some policy pi zero right and then you evaluate the value of pi zero and then you end up at some point pi one and so forth right until you reach an optimal v pi v star actually v star and pi star right so you have this kind of like uh, battle uh, uh, between like uh, the evaluation step and the improvement step right it's like they are competing against each other yet they are cooperating to reach some goal where they have both converged that's the idea here so what value iteration is doing is pretty much the same thing as generalized policy iteration except that it's trying to improve it much quicker after just one step so we'll see in future lectures that there are other algorithms um, that allow us to basically do this improvements maybe after two steps or three steps or four steps or five steps right or n steps in general so value iteration is a special case of this algorithm uh, of these algorithms sorry because value iteration does the improvement right the policy improvement after one step right after one step that's
but there are algorithms that do it after two steps or three steps or in general they can do it after n steps right this is the basic idea behind that so we're going to be looking at these algorithms as well but value iteration is a spe special case of this uh, that i'll name in the future for now you can just um, you don't have to think about it uh, but if you got the idea here if there's one thing you should take uh, take away from this video is just that value iteration is basically doing the same thing as police iteration but it's not computing the completing the whole evaluation stage because it's already taking the maximum of all actions after just one one step right so for you to better understand the whole algorithm uh, i'm going to actually uh, write the pseudocode for the value iteration right so value iteration pseudo code and of course this is uh, from Sutton and Barton's book as usual so as usual the first step is to initialize uh, vs is equal to zero right for all s is an element of s plus as you remember we start with our value array uh, and we initialize the value at every state to be equal to zero then what is the next step we just repeat the following right we start with this delta assigning to zero for convergence purposes so for each state is an element of that what are we going to do we are going to assign v to be equal to vs again this is actually looking like policy evaluation up to now if you remember but at this point now how do we compute vs to compute vs we're actually computing mm, the maximum right over all actions of the summation of s prime comma r of p s prime comma r given s comma a applied by r plus gamma v of s prime this is the basic uh, the basic formula we're using and of course actually another way of looking at this um, if you really think about it uh, what we're actually doing is trying to maximize the q values if you really think about it so let me use a different pen to illustrate my point so essentially if you look at this whole thing here what we're doing is saying the maximum over all actions of q s comma a right Right, we're just trying to find the maximum Q values, uh, basically, over everything here. So of course, I could rewrite this using Q instead of V, uh, but that's not something I'm gonna do right now. So you can think about it in the future. Again, this is just a loose idea of what we're trying to do, the maximum of all actions of our Q values, right? That's basically what it is. But you don't have to think about this for now. Uh, but I thought that they should be quite apparent to you that in value iteration, we're looking at the Q values for each and every state action pair and we're taking the maximum over this Q values. How do we compute the square values? We're still using the same expected update with a particular action in mind. This is the whole idea behind this. And finally, we have this uh, delta being maximum uh, delta again the same as what we had before if you remember from uh, policy evaluation so that's until delta is less than some data right so what is our policy what is our final policy pi of s so it's equals to the ag max 
over all actions of our expected update. This is the argument of all actions of the expected update. And what is the expected update? I guess I've reiterated it. This is actually up to this part. This is our expected update, right? This is our expected update right here. So in a nutshell, uh, that's basically how value iteration is working. It's not a very difficult algorithm to understand. Uh, so you'll see that it really closely resembles uh, policy iteration in that sense. But I hope you now have an idea of how it works and in the next video, before we even look at the, uh, I had hinted at the probably the next algorithms like one step, two step, three step and so forth. Um, but of course there is also another extreme end uh, of these algorithms that I'm going to uh, talk about. But for now, this should be okay. Uh, maybe you don't have to, because these steps actually uh, might indicate uh, something a bit different. But for now, I'm gonna stop here. And in the next lecture, we're gonna look at another algorithm known as Monte Carlo, right? Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, that's the name of the algorithm. Thank you very much.